Good evening. My name is Toya Wilcox. Now, it's been claimed that I spit and growl and do very nasty things to members of the audience, but we'll have no such rubbish tonight. Instead, I'd much prefer to introduce you to some weird and wonderful people, colourful people who stood their ground in the chaotic world as showbiz. We shall also be having a short musical interlude or two from me and my band. But my first guest is a large man in talent, voice and appearance. Please would you welcome, in inverted commas, a very nice man indeed, Mr. Christopher Biggins. I'm so glad you mentioned about the knife because I thought you were getting your own back on Russell Harty, you know. No, 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 there's no, no you. beating up here oh, at all. Good, it's good. just that I'm expected to attack members of the audience, so I thought I'd live up to my name. Yes. But uh, the reason I said that you're a nice man is because you asked me to say that. Now, why is that? You always play nasty parts. Yeah. He is nasty, he's really nasty. Aren't you? Yes. <laughs> you can see I'm nasty. No, I play nasty parts, which is wonderful, though. I mean, it's wonderful to play evil people. I, mean, I don't know if anyone saw... Did anyone see Ozzy Whitworth in Poldark in the audience? Yes. Well, he was a marvellous man. I mean, but it's, it's like J.R. Everybody loves to hate nasty people, you see. It's wonderful. Do you wonderful. really enjoy playing Oh, them? yes. I mean, I was very nasty with you, wasn't I, in Shoestring? You were Do you horrible. Remember? Yes. Disgusting. I love that. Would you tell us about when you played Nero in I, Claudius? You were telling... Uh, the oh, story. that's right. Well, yes, is I also... Another nasty part. We will get on some nice parts in a minute. But I did uh, Nero, and uh, it's... When it had been uh, shown uh, for the second time on a repeat, there was a particular evening that I was out, and it was difficult, as we all know in London, to go somewhere different and exciting and make a change. So we hit upon the revolving, or I should say revolting restaurant... <laughs> which is at the post office tower. And uh, we went, have you been up there ever? No, thank God, no, well, never will. <laughs> it is amazing, because <laughs> what happens is you go up there and you do indeed revolve. Now, you revolve quite fast, fast enough for your wine to move in the glass, you see. And you have this uh, terrible food. I don't think it exists anymore, actually. I think they've closed it off. But you have this terrible food, and you go around, and once you've seen London three times, you've seen it. That's it. You yes. can't do it anymore. <laughs> and I began to get, with this terrible food and the wine, and going round rather ill, so we left. And I went out into a deserted Tottenham Court Road and threw up everything <laughs> into Tottenham Court Road. And at that particular moment, two people went by and said, oh, look, there's Nero vomiting in the street. <laughs> When you play nasty parts, have you ever been known to take them home with you? And sort of just... Pop? I don't know what you mean, Ty. Well, <laughs> so when you were playing, uh, um, uh, what was it, whoever, in Pole Dark, yes, you, were, you were really horrible. Yes. Um, no, because I didn't take it home with me, because I'll tell you why. I mean, it was di very difficult in rehearsals. I, I did a lot of scenes with Jane Wymark, and Jane played my poor wife who got everything. I was terrible to her. And we used to laugh so much in rehearsals. Because I think I am a nice person, and because oh, I was are, saying yeah. all these nasty things... <laughs> I am a nice person! <laughs> because I was saying all these nasty things, we used to... And the directors used to go spare. Because yeah. forever and ever, and we would just laugh and laugh. And on, on takes, I mean, it was terrible. They, we used to go to Birmingham to record them, and people used to be hysterical. It used to be great, had a great power to actually get through a scene properly, but because it was... I, re I remember, because we did shoestring together, and I couldn't stop laughing the whole time. Even in, during a take, you'd do a wink or something. I know, it's Something terrible. to say, I'm Chris Biggins, yes. and you'd just collapse on the floor. But it is, it is, it is, uh, it's lovely to play those parts, because they're much better than playing... I mean, I'm glad I'm not a tall, beautiful young man, because... But you're very fit, aren't you? you oh, I am string. fit. Oh, yes, God. I'm very fit. <laughs> you can outrun anyone. I, I remember hearing... I beg your pardon. I, well, I remember hearing... <laughs> A story that, that you are some you surprise someone when we were filming the Tempest that you're almost super fit. Well, um, I wouldn't go that far, Toy. It's very it's very sweet of you to say that. I, <laughs> and I do swim and I play badminton. Uh, but I did a thing called Star Game. Did you ever see that? It's a, a program no, where I'm afraid not, well, no. it's um, I did the 110 relay, and um, I'm not that fit because actually when I went to hand over the baton, I went blind and I couldn't see where I was handing it. Yeah. Um, I started to shake and Roy Kinnear, who was watching it, swears to this day that I actually ran backwards at one point. Yes. I don't know how true that is, but I'm, <laughs> I am quite fit, yes. I mean, I like to, I am big, 
Yeah. You get iambic. Can you see this? this I, is, I think so. Yeah. This isn't this a lovely sweater, by the way? It's Don't beautiful. you love it? Yes. Alan Dart made this. I wanted to get that in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I am fit, but I mean I, I, and I must be fit because I can't. If I was to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it wouldn't be very good for me. But at the moment. But why don't you get smaller? Because I love my food for one thing, and also I wouldn't work. Don't now, think so. I don't think so. Now people know but me. But wouldn't as your sort talent as an actor keep you going? It'd or? be interesting. Perhaps I should go away for a year, perhaps to somewhere like uh, Los Angeles, and come back absolutely super humanly thin. But I don't think. I, I've got big bones. Do you want to feel my big bones? Oh. No, no, higher up, higher up. <laughs> Wow. Yes, you see, I am big bone, but I do have it's a bit here, and yeah. they're very good legs, too. Very good legs. Why do you firm. think baddies are so successful? Do you think there's any reason? Mm. I just think, I think people are more interested in someone who's doing something kind of vile to someone else. Don't you? When you go and see a film, it's always much more interesting to see somebody being really nasty It's sort of wishful someone. thinking, isn't it? I think it, it is. On... It's kind of, you, you live out of someone's fantasy, I suppose, when you go and see that. I mean, yeah. it, it, it is... It is interesting, uh, playing nasty people, because they, I mean, being like I am, and I, I went through a whole period of playing kind of ordinary, nice situation comedy people, and then Come, Nero yes. changed the, that changed the mark, and the day after Nero was transmitted, I got pole dark, and then shoestring and all other places but i do i mean i play animals you know you've played winnie the pooh I've that's played, what i want to come to i played winnie, winnie the, pooh. the pooh yeah <laughs> i was lovely as winnie the pooh you must lovely. be wonderful so marvelous but i wish to say that winnie the pooh was the hamlet of the animal world <laughs> because he never goes off stage and he's dressed in yellow fur and it's uh, and padding i was padded too because that wonderful poo shape and it is, it is wonderful, because ch playing to children is terrific. I mean, it's the best audience in the world, because you can fool an adult audience like that. But a, ch a child will never be fooled. Yes. They're, they know everything. They're tuned in. They're astute. I mean, how often do we go to the theatre, and we sit there, and we come out not saying anything. We say, well, wasn't that a load of old rubbish? And kids won't. They'll tell you there and then, wasn't that a load of old rubbish? Which do you enjoy, though? Do you enjoy being the buddy or do you enjoy being Winnie the Pooh? Oh, I think. I, I, I like both. I mean, I really do like that. I'm going on to play a sort of baddie in the animal world. I'm going to go down to the Connaught Theatre at Worthing to play Toad in Toad of Toad Hall. And that is kind of like a baddie of the animal world. I mean, he's quite nice, but he's uh, kind of... Uh, he actually digs in the old knife uh, occasionally, you know, too. So he, he's, that's another wonderful animal. I haven't played that before. You were so. telling me that you think uh, a good actor or a good actress could play anything. Now, what were you saying you, you could act? Well, I, I know what you're going to ask me now. I once <laughs> said that we had an argument at home about a discussion over the fact that a man could experience and portray on stage having a baby. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of the women here would agree, but I mean, if, for instance, I was to talk to a woman about um, the excruciating pain, which I think is one of the things, isn't it, ladies, that you go through having a baby? Would you agree? Yes. I would yes. <laughs> okay, So if you can actually, if I can think of the most painful thing that's ever happened to me or experience some awful pain, that, that, that's the pain thing. And then I can imagine the shape. I can yeah. almost imagine it now. <laughs> Chris, I must thank you for coming on. I agree totally with what you say. I mean, I, I don't know what I could act on, on a man's behalf, but I know what you mean. If you know the experiences, you, you can... I think you can. Them. You can almost get it. I mean, a lot of people disagree, but still. Yeah, but thank you very much for Thanks coming very on. Much. Thank you for, for making us enjoy this so much.